This video cast is on distance and displacement. There's two worked examples. When we talk about distance and displacement, we're really talking about simple vectors and scalars. The first one, Marie is moving around the room trying to get equipment together for her lab. At first, Maria moves two meters north to get a meter stick, then two meters south to put it on her lab desk. Then she moves two meters north for a timer, one meter south for a cart, and then two meters south back to her lab station. We have two questions. One, what was Maria's total distance? And two, what was Maria's total displacement? Now in physics problems, the first thing you need to do is organize all the data. In order to organize that information, you have to know what you're hunting for. You know, what is the unknown? What am I trying to solve for? Am I trying to solve for what kind of equipment she needs for this lab? In which case, meter stick and timer and card is important. But no, I'm trying to find total distance and total displacement. So meter stick, timers, doesn't make any difference. So to make sure I don't forget what I'm hunting for, I always write it out. So we're hunting for the total distance. So distance is equal to what? It's our first unknown. The second unknown is the total displacement. Displacement is a vector. So I'm going to put an arrow over it to indicate I'm hunting for a vector. And that's my unknown. So I'm looking for information involving distance and displacement. So I'm hunting for how far she moved and in what direction she moved. When you have a lot of information listed in a problem, it's sometimes handy to go back and just simply uh, circle the information that you're hunting for, two meters north. The direction is important, so I'm circling north. The number is important, how far you're going, and the units are important. Another one here, it's two meters south. Another one, three meters north. Another one meter south. And finally, two meters south back to her lab station. Once I've found the stuff in the problem, I want to list it out so it's clear. Okay, so I've got all these different distances. In fact, I've got five of them. So I have to have some way of distinguishing between each one. So I'm going to call it, say, D1 is the first one. And that's two meters. And I'm lazy. I don't want to write out north. So I'm just going to use a capital N. Distance two, that's equal to two meters. And again, I'm lazy, so I'm just writing a capital S for south. D3, that's um, three meters, and that's north. Distance four, that's one meter, and that's south. And then distance five, and that's two meters, and again, that is south. Okay, I have all my information listed. Now, right now, it would be easy to go out back and find the distance. Remember, distance is just a scalar. Direction doesn't matter. So all I have to do is add up the individual distances. So I've got a 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2. That gives me, last I checked, 2, 4, 7, 8, 10. So I've got 10. And 10 means nothing unless you include the units. 10 meters. So that was easy. Now displacement. Displacement includes direction. There's a couple of ways to do that. We can say that north is positive and south is negative. So I could relist these things as positive and negative. In that case, in fact, I could probably put them over here by the twos, plus two. All right, now I can add all those together. So plus two, minus two, that's zero. Zero plus three is, is three. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 gives me 0. So my total displacement is 0 meters. And put that over here. Okay. So that's a fairly straightforward way. Another way of doing it would be to draw it on a number line. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly try and draw a number line in here. OK, in general, north is considered positive direction. So that would be in the positive direction of the number line, and south would be in the negative direction. Okay. So again, now we're going to do this. We've got two meters north, so it gets it right there. And now we're going two meters south, so it gets it right back to there. And then we go three meters north, so that gets us right there. And then we go one meter south, that gets us there. And then we go another two meters south. And so we end up 
right back at the starting point, which gives us again the zero meters displacement. Lots of different ways to solve this problem in terms of um, figuring it out. But you have to organize the data, you have to be sure of what you're hunting for, you have to be sure to include the units as well as your directions. All right, let's try the second example. Second example, Mrs. Hedden is pacing around the room checking labs. She starts out at the front of the room by the teacher's desk and walks three meters north, stopping to check on Courtney and Adrian's progress. She then walks six meters west to answer a question from Max and Kelsey. It's a quick two-minute jog south to look at Taylor and Jeff's excellent setup. Mrs. Hedden then moves four meters east and talks to Nico and Joe about their conclusion. She then moves one meter south to get some equipment out of a cabinet for Joe. Finally, Mrs. Hedden moves two meters east to refuel with a sip of iced tea. Complicated problem, we think. And again, before you address what's going on, look for what you're hunting for. So we have two questions. What was Mrs. Hedden's total distance? And what was Mrs. Hedden's total displacement? As before, write it down so you don't forget what you're looking for. Again, displacement is a vector, so you need to put that arrow over it. Okay, now we're going to go back and look for the information. Since all we're interested in is distance and displa displacement, it doesn't really matter that um, Nico and Joe have to worry about the conclusion. It doesn't matter that Taylor and Jeff have an excellent setup. What does matter is what Mrs. Hedden's position is, what direction she's going in, and what units are we using. So going back and finding that in the problem, and really the easiest way is just to circle it so you don't lose things. Notice in the one, I've got two meters jog south. The jog really doesn't matter to anyone except for Mrs. Hedden, who doesn't like to jog. Okay, what matters? Two meters, because that's how far in the units, and south, because that's a direction. Okay, then we're going to list all that stuff off to the side. So D1. Okay, have everything listed out. Notice now we've got north, west, south, and east. So we have four different directions instead of just two. So we can't do something nice like saying north is positive and south is negative and then just add them up that way because we've also got west and east that we have to take into consideration. So when we look at the displacement, we're going to have to really draw a picture to organize this data. But distance, distance, we can just add the numbers together because distance is a scalar. Direction doesn't matter. So we can do that right away. Okay, let's go ahead and add these numbers together. 3 plus 6 is 9, 11, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I can write down the total distance is 18 meters. Half the problem is done. Now we have to worry about this displacement. Generally, in directions, again, we consider north to be positive, south to be negative, east positive, west negative. We have these four points. We're going to go ahead and draw a, a Cartesian graph to show those four points. Okay, I've got my quick sketch drawn of, of not just a number line, but a Cartesian graph because I have to worry about the four cardinal directions, north, east, west, and south. Once I get the number line drawn in, and notice in my quick sketch, I double checked over here and said, well, the farthest I go north is three meters, west is six, so I made sure I had six meters west on here and four east, just to make sure I don't have to redraw the thing. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put in my directions, each of my distances. So I start out going three meters north, then I go six meters east. Then I go two meters south. Then I go four meters east. Then I go one meter south. And then I go two meters east. And so I end up right back where I started from. Okay, couple of things. First of all, the displacement is zero because I ended up right back where I started from. So my total displacement was zero. I drew this first one here, and I went to draw the second one. The second one started right where the first one ended. 
because that's the way I walk. I don't magically transport myself back to the teacher's desk. I, if I'm going to go two, three meters north and then six meters west, I'm going to start at six meters west from where I started from. Okay, so each one of these vectors, the new vector started right where the other one ended. Eventually we're going to worry about that because we're going to have to worry about um, putting sines and cosines in there and angles. This is just your first exposure to vectors. We're keeping it real simple right now. Um, and right now, the displacement was zero. My total distance was 18 meters. Thank you for your time.